how to use the lighting filter in Affinity. The lighting filter can be used, of course, with countless images. I'm just using it with an image I created earlier. I will show you how to create that, but let's just go through the lighting filter. But the first thing is, where is it in Affinity 3, PC or Mac? You can first, of course, find it in Pixel, Filters, and just down here to Lighting and Lighting. But here, it's a destructive effect. So if you apply it, you have to undo. But if you use this one, which is the new live filter layer, which is again, and also pixel as well, go here to lighting and lighting. That is a non-destructive effect. And as a non-destructive effect, you can change it at any point. You can also delete it as well, remove it and hide it as well. So let's just go with this lighting. And first thing is you get this. You've got three options here. Three options you've got here for spot, point, and directional. So let's just go spot first. Here's the spot, that's the default. And you can move it around, reposition it. It's spot, it's a spotlight. That's all it's doing, quite a nice spotlight effect on a particular part of the image. And you can modify various settings here. You can see cone and also direction, distance, etc. If you go with point, all it is is a point. That's it, and you can move the point around so you can position it in different places. You can also then, of course, with the settings up here, you can reduce the air and all the very strength of it, specular, shininess, etc. And you can see, you get different results with that. But also you can go here to directional. Now directional is stuck at one point, that central point, but you can see direction, you can move it around and you can also move it closer and closer and closer and closer or move it further until it gets quite dark. You'll notice you've also got ambient, so you can make it ambient light, so you can just set, boost the whole thing up, and you can change the color there of that if you want it, maybe red right from the start. But I'm just gonna go back to white, so click there and just set it back to white. And if you want a nice bit of speckle there, you can see as you do that, it's just decrease that, you can see that just boost up just there, just at that point, it's about 90%. Before that, it's much the same, but just gets to about there, okay. I'm going to go with spot. So spot, I can just move this around. Now I can increase the settings here. You can see I can increase that, move it around like that, but it's stuck, stuck at this point. You need to select here or here. You need to select it. there. You can move those in to change those settings, the cone. Also you've got here, another setting, you move that. You can see that changes the direction there. And also you can move it, reposition it. So you might want a different angle there, like there. It doesn't move anything else, it just moves the position, so you can move it far off, or that way, etc. Okay, once you've got that, what you can also do is you can go here to Texture. So just click Texture, and you can increase this. Now, unfortunately, when it gets to 100%, I think it starts to look a bit ugly because you've got these contours appearing, or ridges, which I really wish there was a smooth feature combined with this. Please put in the comments below if you don't think that should be the case. I mean, I'm perfectly... <laughs> Reason we corrected that there should be no smoothing feature, but personally, I wish there was a smooth feature for this texture. And you can actually extend this beyond this, so you can make it even more intense. So 500, and you can see then 500, or even up to 1,000, probably even maybe more. You can see you can extend it, but you do get this ridge effect. And again, you modify direction, and you can see it can get a bit messy. But let's just change the color, because I've got this one, spot, Click here, and I'm going to go with red. And you can see I can put it to red. And now I can again reposition this, move it around. And also again, I can reduce that down because that's just ridiculous. Just let's make it a bit smoother at 43. But what you can also do is you can add additional lights. There's options here, add, copy, and remove. Now copy just copies what you've got. So you've got, I'm using light one. It will just copy it and create a new light, light two on top of it. That's all it does. So if I just click copy instead of add, add just puts it at the default position, but let's just copy and now copy again. So you've got three lights now. I can go to the second one and I can change color. Let's go for say green like that. But then I can go over here. These are independent and I can move this around, maybe go like that. And then you get this lovely green effect, but also combined with the red. So again, you can recolor your images quite quickly with this feature. Also, what you can do is go to the third one. So third one here, again, which is still at the same position. It remembers the position. So you can then put it, say, at this angle. 
and maybe change the light, go with blue. It's, of course, got the red light at the moment, but you've got the blue there, and you can see then you create that. And, of course, you can tweak this, push this down. You might not want that to be interfering so much, and put the shineness up and speckler up as well. And you can see vary that. And move this around, change this, and you can see you get a whole range of different color designs just using this approach. But what I want to now do is go down here as well. And you've got here load bump map. Now all that is, is a file, just a file. So load bump map, and you can select a file. If you've got some files, I've got some files here. This one, which is actually very similar to this image, not exactly the same, but very similar. Click open, and it allows you to bring in this. And combined, obviously, with textures, if I reduce the texture down, if you get it down to zero, you don't see it. Nothing there, very subtle, very, very subtle, 0.6. But you can see if you push it up. But it can be not particularly great. Again, maybe you require an image that's slightly blurry to actually create something that's a bit smoother in the end result. But you can clear it as well if you don't want it. Unfortunately, there's no scaling feature. All you do is scale horizontal to fit. So that's all it's doing to do that. And also you can reduce the opacity down for it. Obviously, if you can't see it particularly now because I've cleared it, but that option's available. You've also got blend mode, so you can go through and change it. You might prefer the image effect with linear burn instead of using normal. There's options there for a load of different blend modes with your light. Now, if you've decided this is the design you like, you can simply just merge it. So you can just click merge and that will merge the lighting effect into the pixel layer. Basically, it's equivalent of a destructive effect at that point. You can also simply delete it if you don't want it or just reset it back to all the original settings. So if you're not sure about this, click reset, but you can close it. So now with that, you've got your pixel layer, but over here in the layers, you can see you've got this lighting effect added there. Well, you can also right click, it's just a layer and you can duplicate. And you can see you get that result and again, duplicate again. So you can see you can create very intense, very unusual, 3D texture there. You can delete them as well. So just quickly delete them. If you want to edit it, simply just click here and brings up the panel live again. And you can then modify the settings, change the various textures and reduce down if you don't want that setting and close. But also what you can do is you can add additional effects as well. So with this, you can always go to pixel, go down here, new life filter layer, blur, and you could add all kinds of one, maybe radial or Gaussian. Probably Gaussian is a more conventional one, but let's just go with there. And you can see then you can create a lovely blurring effect with that. Preserve alpha. Now that's applied across the entire, over the entire image. So close that. What I want to do is actually have it modify the underlying image. So what you need to do, simply select it here and then drag, drag down there, down below. And then you see the line there right at the bottom, that line there and release. Now what you've got is... The actual image before is being, here's the image, being rotated. So you can see you get very interesting effects simply by just clicking here and then by just changing the angle will result in differently. You can change the position there. So you can see you can create some very weird and wonderful, lovely, unusual, smooth, much smoother texture effects using that source material along with the lighting effect as well. So you can create, and of course you could use zoom blur as well. That's got another one again where you can modify the position of the origin and, and then just also use blend modes. You can see use that to create some interesting designs that way as well. But let's just go with the normal and close. So you've got that pixel layer and just a single lighting layer, but you can see you can create a variety of different backgrounds. Maybe use this as an overlay design. It's quite a lovely sort of unusual blurred effect like that. But how to create the actual initial design in the first place? Well, let's just go back to the source file. This design here was created using just a gradient and deform filter, powerful combination. So let's just quickly go and remove this layer. With this layer gone, I can now go over here to layers and just go down the bottom here, click pixel layer, and then you can add a gradient. So gradient there and drag, and just create a very intense white and black, and probably best to create it like this, very close together. So you get very strong black and a bit of gray and also some white. 
Well, once you've got that, you can then go to the deform filter. So pixel, filters, and then just down here to distort and deform. And in deform, you could use similarity or rigid. I'm going to go with rigid and then simply add some pins. And by adding pins, say there and maybe there, just add a few, just a initial, and also maybe add a few around the edge to pin the design in like that so it doesn't go off out the edge. So then you can just move this around and just drag there to the center, click, click the white areas, so click the white areas and drag that in. So you get these lovely sort of areas of very intense ridges that can be used, of course, with the lighting. And then you drag this one out here, getting black over here, you can drag that across. And you can see all kinds of different designs. And if you work at center, you can just drag this in. Again, you've got that black, the underlying black, and here the underlying white, which you can bring in again, creates more interesting selections of color there and just drag that over there maybe and so on. So you can see you can create, build quite a nice, interesting design super quick. You can also go to pixel filters and repeat the form to create that. Always really good to apply a couple of times and sometimes create some very unique structures. And then again, pixel, down to filters, and then lighting and lighting, or use, if you want it as a non-destructive effect, go to lighting and lighting here. With that, you can then, of course, very quickly add some colors in, just change the spot color here, change distance, change color, going to red, and then maybe add another light and go this way, and then maybe go with green again. I always love a combination of red and green to create some interesting designs. And just drag that like that. And again, if you want, add some texture into it. Again, you've got this, unfortunately, push it too far, and you get this sort of very mottled looking design like that. And then close. There you have it. Very quick landscape sort of creation, very sort of unusual textured design in Affinity using the lighting filter. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions or thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. Bye.